Having a brief but truly significant history for the automotive industry of Wisconsin, United States, the Winther Company was dedicated from 1916 to 1927 to the production of heavy-duty vehicles, with capacities ranging from 1 to 7 tons in weight. While these trucks were designed for agricultural, forestry, and even firefighting tasks, in its later years the company took on the task of innovating to create a snowplow of enormous magnitudes. Due to the era in which it was built, precise information is not available about it. However, what has been recovered from the records of the Wisconsin Historical Society is that it was a huge heavy truck equipped with two engines, a small one for the vehicle's rear traction, and a second engine, apparently a six-cylinder in line with a T-head, that powered the main blower. This machine had a central cabin located between both engines, which was completely enclosed, unlike the open cabs equipped on previously produced models. This was for obvious operational reasons, as the snow removal capabilities were quite considerable in order to clear huge snow-covered roadways in urban areas. In the summer of 1927, after 11 years of operation, the company was sold to a third party, thus culminating this brief history. Due to the time period in which it served, and since there is no record of whether a model of these enormous snowplows still exists, there is no filmographic content about this machine. However, some claim that its operation was similar to that of the railroad blowers that are still used today, capable of clearing mountains of up to 3 meters of snow. Lee Tourneau is recognized for having been one of the most impressive manufacturers of large, special-purpose vehicles in the world. Thanks to its diesel-electric propulsion principle, this company was capable of building some exceptionally unique machines for jobs in industries like forestry. Such is the case of the clearing machine called the G175, or also known as the Luterno Tree Crusher. To understand its magnitude, suffice it to know that each of these machines measured 17 meters long, 6.4 meters high, and weighed approximately 160 tons. Although it may not seem like it, these dimensions were vital for its operation, as it basically worked by crushing and pushing trees using two enormous rollers, one front and one rear, which had steel claws, 15 centimeters long. In this way, they left behind a compact mass of wood debris ready to be removed by other equipment. The extraordinary performance of these machines caught the attention of the U.S. Army, which acquired the only two available units in 1968 for strategic clearing and conflict zones. However, the need to adapt this equipment to improve its security capabilities made them unviable, and they were returned shortly after their implementation, abandoning the Army's original idea. Of the few units produced, only one of them could be properly dismantled, transported, and reassembled in Mackenzie, Canada, where it now serves as a historical piece, a testament to the amazing feats of Le Tourneau. For this feat, it was necessary to use two cargo cranes, with which the six enormous pieces that make up the tree crusher were moved, as well as two logging trucks to take everything to its new resting place. Originally created for the transport of the Saturn YB and Saturn V rockets, the crawler transporters, formerly known as Missile Crawler Transporter Facilities, are a pair of enormous vehicles used by NASA for the movement of large tonnage space equipment. They were designed and built in 1965 by the Marion Power Shovel Company, using some components developed by Rockwell International. Following its construction, it consolidated itself as the largest self-propelled land vehicle in the world, until it was surpassed in 2013. In terms of its dimensions, this unit measures 40 meters long and 35 meters wide, with an adjustable height ranging from 6 to 8 meters, reaching a weight of 2,721 tons. To understand the exorbitant weight, suffice it to know that they have 8 treads, or tracks, 2 on each corner, each made up of 57 shoes, each weighing almost one ton. Due to the nature of its work, this unit integrates a liftable platform equipped with an advanced dynamic stabilization system. 
It also integrates a laser guidance system to complete its journeys, which are supervised by a team of up to 30 engineers, technicians, and drivers who direct everything from an internal control room and two cabins on the vehicle located at each end. This equipment was updated in 2003 and 2016 and is finally made up of 16 electric traction motors powered by four 1,000 kilowatt generators, which are driven by two 2,750 horsepower Alco V16 diesel engines each. Additionally, two 750 kilowatt generators driven by two 1,065 horsepower engines are used to power the rest of the systems with a load capacity of 8,200 tons. The Bagger 288 is a mobile bucket wheel excavator designed for open pit mining, which was developed and built by the German company Krupp. The intention behind this enormous 13,500 ton machine, assembled in 1978, was to be able to remove debris from the Hambach coal mine. It achieved this easily as it had a performance of 240,000 tons of material per day, the equivalent of a football field excavated up to 30 meters deep. This represented a coal production volume of 2,400 railcars. In terms of its dimensions, this excavator reached 220 meters long and approximately 95 meters high. Its operation requires 16.56 megawatts of externally supplied electricity, which is why, although it surpasses the NASA transporter in dimensions, this machine could not acquire the title of the largest self-propelled equipment. To mitigate the pressure on the ground, the chassis of the main section, 46 meters wide, sits on three rows of four track shoe assemblies, each 3.8 meters wide. This in turn allows it to travel on surfaces like gravel, dirt, and even grass without leaving a significant mark. However, if there is one thing to mention, besides its enormous turning radius of almost 100 meters, its travel speed is 2 to 10 meters per minute, equivalent to 0.1 to 0.6 kilometers per hour. A notable feat was that, in February 2001, it made a journey of 22 kilometers, or 14 miles, crossing railway lines, highways, and even rivers. This maneuver cost the equivalent of 14 million current dollars. But surprisingly, moving the Bagger 288 in a single piece was more economical than dismantling and transporting it piece by piece. In case there were any doubts about the capabilities of Le Tourneau, one of its greatest feats was breaking the limits of imagination by creating what is known as the Overland Train. This was literally a kind of train designed to travel over inhospitable terrain thanks to exceptional off-road capabilities. Among all the versions launched with this concept by the giant machine company, the Le Tourneau TC-497 stands out. What makes it so special is its ability to be as long as needed, integrating steerable axles on the coupled trailers. Another innovation it incorporated was gas turbines for propulsion, featuring up to four Saturn 10 MC turbines of 1,170 horsepower. The cab, also known as the Mark II, was much larger than its predecessors, measuring 6.1 meters in height. Due to the substitution of the diesel engine for a gas turbine, the space allowed for up to six crew members with sleeping quarters, bathrooms, and a kitchen. For testing, two power cars and 10 cargo cars were built, reaching a total extension of 170 meters, being capable of mobilizing up to 150 tons of cargo at 32 kilometers per hour. In terms of its autonomy, fully loaded it could travel up to 400 miles, or approximately 640 kilometers expandable by adding additional fuel trailers. This equipment was used in Army tests in 1962, however. The appearance of heavy lift helicopters made the concept obsolete. Of the TC-497, only the control cab remains at the Yuma Proving Ground Heritage Center in Arizona, since the rest was sold to a local scrapyard, although that will never take away its record as the longest all-terrain vehicle in the world.